But on this episode, we're going to welcome some new faces into the next move group. We've got a lot of opportunities around the nation, different areas, different geographies, different price levels we wanted to touch on. Independent Stave Company, the largest oak barrel manufacturer in the world, will invest more than $30 million and create approximately 60 new jobs in Batesville, Arkansas for their latest facility. Grant funding helps to ensure that public money is spent responsibly, or in other words, leveraging local funds to obtain grants can really make your dollar go a long way. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here is Chad Chancellor. Hello, this is Chad Chancellor, co-founder of Next Move Group. I want to wish everybody a happy Easter. Uh, I'm in a bad mood. Today is tax day in the United States, and uh, we're sending a whole lot of money today to Washington, D.C., uh, to Missouri, and all the other places that we had to pay taxes to. So while I love the springtime, I love this time of the year. Baseball has started. The Cardinals have started good. Uh, tax day is not a good day. But on this episode, we're going to welcome some new faces into the next move group. Chuck Saxon and Ivy Stanley will be on here in a minute doing various different segments of our newscast. Chuck has joined us as CEO, having run one East Kentucky, a regional economic development organization in Kentucky for eight years. Prior to that, he served as vice president under me in Paducah, Kentucky. So we worked together before. Ivy Stanley is our new COO. She served under Chuck as well at one East Kentucky. So we all have a rapport as far as knowing how each other works. And we're glad to have them on our team. They're going to be coming to you in a minute with various different segments. I think Chuck's going to tell you about the industrial announcements that have been out there. Bo Bowling Green, Kentucky had a big one this week. Huh? And Ivy's going to talk about grant opportunities that are on the market. As for Next Move Group, we remain very, very active in executive searches. I think right now we're doing them in Kansas, Texas, Mississippi, Kentucky, Maryland, and Florida. As of right now, we got proposals out also to various other states. We've got proposals out to Ohio. I think we've got one out to North Dakota, Texas, various ones in Texas. So we've got several different proposals out. So that part of our business just continues to pick up steam. We now do about as many chambers of commerce searches as economic development. So keep us in mind for those. Of course, we also do port searches. You know, we started economic development. That thing grew on us because you meet everybody in town. We even do in private executive searches now matter of fact that was one of our biggest customers in march we landed a private executive search deal so if some of your companies in town have trouble finding their white collar management we tell them we don't hire the plant manager and we don't hire the line workers but if they need a warehouse manager if they need a financial controller whatever the case may be we can we actually just helped an engineering firm hire surveyors surveyors are hard to find now there's not that many people graduate with surveying degree that's something we just did so feel free if you hear people in your community say they're having a hard time finding that to let us know we know how to get eyeballs on jobs and communities we know how to do that and we can do that for your companies uh, a significant piece of our business is growing is board training As a matter of fact this week i'm going to be in florida doing some work for a north florida via florida state university's rural economic development program doing some uh, economic development strategic planning board trainings for i believe eight different counties doing it for eight different counties we're kind of doing half a day boot camp workshops you know y'all have seen the video that we sell but these are in person half a day workshops they actually heard alex speak at the florida rural economic development summit you know give a 30 minute presentation in december and they called us and said that was so good can y'all come do a half a day board training for six to for eight of our counties and so we said yes so i'm actually doing that this week and next you know two or three days this week two or three days next week in florida just did one of these in kingsport tennessee for the sullivan partnership networks tn up there the kingsport bristol area just did one there a few weeks ago for them and uh, doing several other ones right now so that part of our business is really growing so if you need board training whether economic development elected officials or how everybody gets along together we can do it by zoom we did one for shelbyville tennessee via zoom recently that we got great reviews on we can do it in person did one in person for alabama power or uh, we can do it however you want us to do it i mean we've done some zooms for community in south dakota however you want us to do it you get with us and we'll figure it out. Uh, we've been working ourselves to death on a site selection project that we think is about to land. So hopefully we'll have news here in the next few months of a site location project we're doing, very sizable projects, nearly worked us to death. So we'll be glad to get that one on the ground. And our movement, I wanna tell you something we're gonna do. You'll be hearing this in May. 
So we started the movement two years ago. That's that membership program. Many of you watching are members, but for the folks that aren't, that's the membership program where we put out content every single Tuesday. Every single Tuesday, we put out content. When we started, it was it was all the content we thought of. You know, we got videos in there. You know, you get a video and a workbook and an audio file. So we got in there how to land deals in rural towns, how to deal with your elected officials, how to handle the media, how to do social media, this, that, and the other. Well, now our members tell us the shows they want. So now, like this week, they want to show on performance metrics. What's a good, you know, performance metric system in a contract that their board can give them. One wanted to show on housing. We didn't have housing expertise, so we went and brought it in. Well, anyway, we put these out every Tuesday. And that thing has grown so much. Our business has grown 40% the last uh, two, well, actually the last three years, but two years since we started the movement. So. We're going to raise our prices on that in June for our second anniversary because the people who have started with us, we've got a 95% retention rate. In other words, we've kept 95% of the ones since day one, and they've been paying one price. Well, once you join the movement, it's a library. You get all those videos in there. Well, we've been doing it two years now, so there must be 100 videos. I hadn't counted, but, you know, two to 52. Got to be close to that. We've got a staff training course in there. If you hire somebody off the street, yeah, watch it. They're going to start learning terminology, you know, so we got all that in there. Well, it's not right to them to be paying that price and somebody can join now and get all the videos they've been paying for for two years. That's not right. So what we're going to do is uh, on our anniversary in early June, we're going to up the price double. I think right now it's $247 a month. Some got in at $183 right when we started. Then we raised it a hair, but right now it's $247. So what we're going to do is raise that double in June. That way we honor our existing customers. We've got economic developers from coast to coast that have joined. I mean, coast to coast, we've got elected officials that have joined. We've got five or six power companies that have joined to get it for everybody within their territory. So we want to honor all those people, but we don't want to just up the price that to anybody. So through May, you'll be able to get in for the price that it is right now. And it's like Netflix. That's the monthly price every month. You get tired of it, you cut it off. So you'll be seeing some promotional material from us for that. That's why we're doing that when it comes to June. Now for a little baseball, you see I've got on my St. Louis Cardinals shirt. Cardinals have started good. Beat the Brewers last night. Started with the Pirates and the Royals who aren't very good. So, you know, I'm not sure how good we are, but we did beat the Brewers last night. So certainly it's a better start to last year. We will take it. It looks like the Cardinals are going to have a good team. Albert Pujols is back. He's already hit a home run and got everybody at Bush Stadium going. Mississippi State uh, started the season terribly. We've had a lot of pitching injuries. We lost a lot of leadership. Our hitters have not been hitting. We came into this week in really bad shape. We beat Auburn the first two games. I'm recording this episode before we play Auburn the third time. If we beat Auburn tonight, uh, we back in this thing that, that would put us seven and eight in the SEC. And, and actually on my podcast this week, if you heard it, I said, Mississippi state's not going to make the NCAA tournament because we were four and eight. But if we sweep Auburn, we might, we got a shot here. So we play Auburn tonight. That's a big game. Lots of injuries. We did win the national title last year, so it is no sense in freaking out. Uh, we all need to sit and enjoy what we had last year. Uh, you know, some of the fans are already saying, uh, I've got the wrong coach, you know. Are you out of your mind? We won the national title. No, we don't have the wrong coach. We got injury. Be patient. If this team wins today, we're back in good shape. Be patient. Let's see what happens. And even if we don't make it, we won the national title. We'll move on to next year. I had the chance to visit, to go to the final four in New Orleans here a few weeks ago and watch Duke and North Carolina, you know, the other games too, but the game was Duke and North Carolina. And I guess that was as fine a basketball game as there has ever been. And I'm coach case last game. Can you believe that? He lost to North Carolina, his last game at home and his last game at the final four in the Superdome. Uh, I thought the Superdome was well put together, you know, big football stadium. They put that floor in the middle and it's hard to see and hear you would think they had the sound system. Perfect. I mean, you could hear them dribbling the ball from the upper deck and we had very nice seats where we could see very, very well. I had been to it one time before in Minneapolis. This was the second time, but North Carolina and Duke. I mean, I guess that's about as good as it gets. And of course, New Orleans is as good of a place. I think we got Super Bowl in a couple of years. we got all those hotels where everybody can walk good of a place as there could be. So our golf tip for this week, the people have been saying, Chad, we hadn't seen you on this show in a while. We missing the golf tips. Well, this is not an official tip, but this is what I'm going to tell you. If you watch Scotty Scheffler win the Masters Sunday, 
you know, he, if, if you notice him, he slides into the ball, his feet are going everywhere. He has a real hard time hitting a hook, which is a right to left shot. And at Augusta, you've got to hook the ball on several tee shots. You've got to hook the ball on two. You've got to hook the ball on 10. You've got to hook the ball on 13. You have to. And on those holes, if you watched him, he absolutely looked like an amateur swinging follow through i mean he, he you would not have guessed that was a professional golfer and the man won the masters running away what is the tip if you can hit a shot consistently even if it's a slice but you know where it's going you can play golf and that's what he can do no matter all that footwork he has he can hit that fade every time it, he, he struggles to hit a hook as you could see on 10 when he was trying to hook the ball around that. But the shot he can hit, he can hit every time. And so many people get so worried about uh, being able to do all these things with the ball. I got to hit it high, low, hook, fade, this, that, and that. If, there's, if you can't hit but one shot, but you can hit that shot 95% of the time, hit it. Don't worry about nothing else. You will be successful and you'll score well. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Hello, everybody. Alex Metzger here, co-founder of Next Move Group for the Your Next Move segment of this week's newscast. We've got a lot of opportunities around the nation, different areas, different geographies, different price levels we wanted to touch on. So if you are interested or you know of anybody in the industry interested in a new opportunity, have them reach out to our staff and we can see if we can find the right job for them. We're going to start off in Maryland, Garrett County, Maryland. This is a search Next Move Group is doing. Might sound familiar to you because we recently finished the Garrett County Chamber of Commerce. Well, this is not that search. This is the county organization. So Garrett County, Maryland is looking for a director of planning and community development. Salary range is a 90 to 105,000. They're going to oversee a staff of approximately 10 in the planning and economic development departments. If you're wondering where Garrett County is, it is a beautiful, beautiful place. Lots of lakes. You can ski there in the winter. It is about uh, maybe two and a half hours from Washington, D.C. and two hours from Pittsburgh, but only about 45 minutes from Morgantown. So very close to West Virginia University as well. The deadline to apply is May 6th. And again, Next Move Group is doing that search. So you can find more information at thenextmovegroup.com backslash Garrett County. Another search that we are doing right now is in Putnam County, Florida. So the Putnam County Chamber of Commerce is looking for a vice president of economic development. Salary range is going to be roughly to 70 to 80,000. Now there are some bonus and incentive opportunities with this role, but the Putnam County Chamber is a spectacular organization. I believe it's one of only seven chambers in the entire state of Florida that has five-star accreditation this year, and they've won Chamber of the Year multiple times, so a great organization, a great opportunity in a great area of the country. Putnam is located kind of right in between uh, Gainesville, Orlando, and Jacksonville, so if you want some great weather, look at this opportunity. For more information, thenextmovegroup.com backslash Putnam. Now, around the nation, Jorgensen is doing a new search for the Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce, looking for a president and CEO. Now, my sister lives in this, uh, this area of the country, get up there all the time. It is fantastic. Uh, the, the Quad Cities Chamber, everybody's heard of it. There's about 30 members on the staff. Um, probably a five to six million dollar budget. They're going to pay two hundred twenty-five to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So again, wonderful opportunity. If you're interested, you can go to Jorgensen's website or reach out to Quad Cities Chamber at jci-inc.net.
Over in Ohio, the Tiffin Seneca Economic Partnership is looking for a president and CEO. So this is Tiffin, Ohio, uh, located in kind of the northeast section, pretty much in between uh, Cleveland and uh, right in that area near the Great Lakes. So uh, salary is competitive. They have not posted it, but Site Selection Magazine has bragged on this area of the country quite a bit. I think for 11 straight years, they've been in the top 20% nationally in Projects 1. So Tiffin Seneca County is a great micropolitan area to live. Um, they will report to the board. If you're interested, they're doing this search. Uh, for more information, go to tsepsearch.com. I don't know why I'm reading that out. You can read it right there on the screen. Send a cover letter to tsepsearch at tiffinseneca.org. And down in Georgia, the Chaser Group is launching a new search again in the Elantro metro area. So president of Coweta County Development Authority. This is Newman, Georgia. So kind of the, the southwest area of the Atlanta metro area has a population of roughly 150,000. A very, very nice community. Deadline to apply is May 13th. So reach out to Tim Chasen if you're interested in this, learning more about it, or maybe want to apply. And last, we're going to head down to Rockport, Texas. This is Aransas County Partnership Economic Development Corporation. Going to pay eighty-five to one hundred and ten thousand. This is uh, pretty much in the Corpus Christi area, um, kind of just to the north of it, right there on the coast, surrounded by the bay. So you'll have a lot of opportunities there. Beautiful, great weather on the Gulf of Mexico. Deadline to apply is May twentieth. And if you would like to apply or learn more about it, just send your materials or reach out to mmeek1919 at gmail.com. Again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you know of anyone who is looking for a career change, please have them reach out to our staff and we will share these and other opportunities with them. Thanks and have a great week. Hello, this is Chuck Sexton, CEO of Next Move Group. And in this week's Rounding the Bases segment, I'll be highlighting some great wins in rural communities from across America. These announcements will range from large to small and be both new location wins as well as expansions of existing industries. As all economic developers know, growing your own is an important part of the job, and we want to celebrate that with you. Independent Stave Company, the largest oak barrel manufacturer in the world, will invest more than $30 million and create approximately 60 new jobs in Batesville, Arkansas for their latest facility. Congrats to Crystal Johnson, CEO of Batesville Area Chamber of Commerce and City of Batesville Economic Development on this win. It's, it's a win that's kind of near and dear to my heart uh, because Independent Stave uh, likes to make those oak barrels to put bourbon in. And I am Kentucky through and through. Germany-based Klockner Pinneplast, a global manufacturer and supplier of sustainable packaging products, plans to expand its productions in Beaver, West Virginia. Uh, that's part of the Appalachian Power Company territory, so congrats to our friends over there as well. Nucor will locate a new micro-mill steel plant in Lexington, North Carolina. The $350 million project is expected to create 180 jobs in Davidson County. Wood biomass producer in Viva will establish manufacturing operations in Bond, Mississippi. The $250 million project is expected to create 100 jobs in Stone County. The company plans to start construction in 2023 and expects to begin operations there by 24. Core Stone Company, an architectural stone cutter and supplier, plans to build a production and executive management facility in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. The $17.9 million project is expected to create 34 jobs over the next three years. West Michigan Tool and Die, uh, Contract Tool and Die Shop is expanding its operations in Benton Harbor Township, Michigan. The $3.4 million project is expected to create 22 jobs. Again, even though some of these might be smaller projects, I think it's important that we celebrate those wins with the economic developers and elected officials who help make those happen because we need good jobs in all of our communities, no matter how big or small. Bunting Incorporated, a specialty contractor offering products and services in the architectural signage and ornamental metals markets, will establish a manufacturing operation in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. The $16.8 million project is expected to create 79 jobs over the next four years in Lawrence County. Concentrated Active Ingredients and Flavors, a supplier of innovative, naturally sourced ingredients will establish operations in West Columbia, South Carolina. $5 million investments expected to create 20 jobs in Lexington County. Here's a big one. Macy's Inc. will establish its first automated fulfillment center in China Grove, North Carolina. The $584 million project is expected to create 2,800 jobs in Rowan County. The new 1.4 million square foot facility will ship orders directly to customers nationwide, accounting for nearly 30% of the retailer's digital supply chain capacity once fully operational. This isn't too far from Salisbury, North Carolina, where our friend Elaine Spaulding runs the chamber there. And Elaine was uh, running the Chamber of Commerce in Paducah when we were all there together. So congrats to everyone over there in Round County, North Carolina. 
Wholesale food supplier and equipment supplier, Catum Net Restaurant Supply, will expand its distribution operations in Sevier County, Tennessee. The $7.5 million project, dollar project is expected to create 120 new jobs over the next five years. So a big congratulations to all these communities, the elected officials, the economic developers, everyone who works together to make these jobs come into their communities. We certainly can't highlight every announcement uh, on our podcast or our newscast, uh, but what we'd like to do is have you send us some of the wins that you're proud of that you'd like us to talk about. So for Next Move Group, this is Chuck Sexton. Until next time. You're listening to Ivy Stanley, Next Move Group's COO. For this week's Acing Economic Development, I'm going to share a few highlights from grants.gov. Grant writing never gets the applause it deserves. Grant writers are truly the unsung heroes of community and economic development. It's a behind the scenes effort that is only recognized if there's a win. Grant funding helps to ensure that public money is spent responsibly, or in other words, leveraging local funds to obtain grants can really make your dollar go a long way in taking long-term goals from a plan to reality for your community. Sometimes that's a difficult thing for John Q. Public to understand. Work that goes into making the following opportunities a reality is not the sexiest of activities for local and regional organizations, but they are certainly necessary for building a foundation for success. First, I wanna highlight the U.S. Department of Transportation's Maritime Administration is accepting applications through May 16th for their Port Infrastructure Development Program. You can apply for up to $112.5 million or as little as $1 million for capital investment and planning projects for coastal seaports, inland river ports, and Great Lakes ports. Next, I want to highlight the U.S. Department of Transportation's Rural Surface Transportation Grant Program. It is open through May 23rd. This part program is part of a larger $2.9 billion pot of funding where you may be eligible based on project scope to apply for funding through all three discretionary grant programs. $300 million has been set aside for capital or planning projects with a special eligibility requirement of being located outside of an urbanized area that has a population of 200,000 or more. Lastly, I want to take the opportunity to highlight this uh, grant opportunity from the U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Transit Administration. You're eligible to apply for up to $37 million through the Bus and Bus Facilities Program. This grant will aid in communities' efforts to build upon their public transportation infrastructure through the bus transit system. One large barrier in getting people to work in communities small and large is transportation. This opportunity closes on May 31st. I would be remiss in sharing a quick overview of the resources that grants.gov has available to assist in writing successful grant applications. They are continuously making improvements to their application system, providing blog posts on frequently asked questions and publishing tips and learning videos. One of my most recent discoveries regarding grants.gov is the grants.gov app that's available from the Apple App Store or Google Play for download, allowing you to search and submit at the palm of your hands. One of my favorite economic development services we offer at Next Move Group is strategic planning. Successful grant writing starts with a strategic plan. And it's often a law-backed requirement for a community to have and follow one. Be sure to reach out to Next Move Group for additional information about what we may be able to do for you. 